overwatering will destroy your indoor plant and you need to act fast if you think yours is suffering from too much water. We've all been there, the excitement of nurturing a beautiful house plant only to find it wilting, yellowing and struggling to survive due to our well-intentioned but excessive watering habits. But fear not, in this video I'll show you effective steps to rescue your overwatered plant and bring it back to vibrant health. How can you tell if your plant is overwatered? Well, for starters, overwatering is not simply giving your plant too much water. If it's ready for a drink, then you can't give it too much water in one sitting. In fact, it's best practice to saturate the soil as much as possible when you do come to water it. Instead, overwatering is simply giving it water more often than it needs. Repeatedly giving it a drink when the soil is already wet, like giving a drunk uncle at a wedding yet another a drink when you know it's likely going to result in disaster will result in lots of problems for your plant. Keeping the soil constantly saturated deprives the roots of oxygen. This is the real killer. A lack of oxygen can cause root rot and eventually lead to the death of the plant. This happens when soil is never allowed to dry out and it's particularly a problem if you let your plant sit in standing water for long periods. There are a few telltale signs above the soil line to overwatering you need to look out for. If you your plant's leaves are turning yellow and becoming mushy or translucent, it could be a sign of overwatering. This is because overwatering causes root rot, preventing the roots from delivering nutrients to the leaves. Think of your plant's roots as the underground highways that transport vital nutrients to the leaves, much like a well connected network of roads and highways in a bustling city. When overwatering occurs, it's as if heavy rainfall floods those roads, causing them to become impassable. Just as flooded streets disrupt the flow of traffic, root rot disrupts the nutrient flow, preventing nutrients from reaching the leaves. Surprisingly, overwatered plants can exhibit wilting as well, just as much as underwater plants do. The excess moisture prevents roots from absorbing oxygen, leading to wilting despite the soil being moist. Leaf drop is another common sign that you're being too generous with the watering can. If you notice excessive leaf drop, especially accompanied by yellowing, it could be due to overwatering. Excess moisture also creates a much too hospitable environment for mold and fungus. If you see mold or fungus on the soil surface or the plant's leaves, it's a clear sign of overwatering. Overwatering can also lead to weak, mushy stems. If you notice your plant's stems are unusually soft and prone to bending or breaking, it could be a result of overwatering. And overwatered plants could become more susceptible to pests such as fungus gnats, aphids and mealybugs. These pests thrive in damp environments and can indicate an overwatering issue. If our yellow sticky traps are full of cork gnats then the soil is probably too wet. Oh I have this Chinese money plant that has seen better days. I think it's suffering from overwatering because the stem is feeling a little bit soft and a bit like it wants to bend over and there's also lots of blisters in the leaves which means that water has been drawn up too much through the roots into the leaves. They've blistered and they've burst so that's what's happening here. Unfortunately, I've been overwatering it. Don't ask me how, but I have been. So we're going to assess the damage, get it out of this decorative pot. There's water in there, which is never a good sign. So we're going to pull it out carefully without destroying the leaves. And the, uh, the pot is soaking wet, which is never what you want to see. And the root ball is sopping wet and it's squelching. So I've been giving this plant far too much water for far too long and the bottom of the root ball is squelching and there's, well the roots are falling off so this is not a, uh, a happy plant at all. So there's black mushy roots at the bottom so there's root rot in here which is never a good thing at all. So normally I advise to not bother touching the roots when you repot but in this case, because they're so wet, I'm going to uh, get rid of this as much as possible. There's not going to be much left, I don't think, at this rate. So I think that what the problem with, with this plant might have been was the wrong soil type. I think I just used normal topsoil instead of compost, which is far too dense, really, even with perlite. Okay, so I've gotten rid of most of the 
roots really and the soil. There's not much left here, but there are some roots left. I'm just gonna see what kind of condition they're in. Some of them are a little bit black at the tip, so I'm just gonna cut them loose. Like so. You don't want rotting roots to stay in really, because otherwise it's gonna spread to the rest of the healthy roots that grow. Okay, so there's not much plant left there. And I'm keeping the pups of this Chinese money plant because I do like how it fills in the bottom of the plant. The pot really was too small for the size of the plant with all the pups. So I'm going to pot it up into a bigger pot with some nice, fresh, drier soil. So I've got my usual mix of five parts compost, two parts perlite. The compost retains moisture, but not too much. And it gives nutrients to the, uh, to the plant as well. The perlite aids drainage, so it doesn't, so the, the root ball doesn't hold on to too much moisture like it was. Quite awkward to, uh, to repot this because of all the pups and the fact that there's not many roots left. So I'm gonna try and hold it for its stick and the central stem and then pot around. Quite a delicate procedure. So now you might think that the plant has been over watered, so you don't want to give it any water, but you'd be wrong because I've got nice fresh soil in here and I want to give it a good drink. I've got rid of all the rotting roots, so you want them to get a good, a good drink, what was left. You don't want to just sat in dry soil. But the important thing is to not water it again until it needs it, until it's fully dry. I'm just going to give that a drink until it starts coming out of the bottom of the drainage holes, which it is now. And then I'm gonna put that in a nice bright spot and it should bounce back. Once you've repotted your plant, you really need to think about your watering schedule to avoid this happening again in the future. And what's the best watering schedule? To not have one. If you're watering your plant on schedule every Saturday without checking the soil first, then this is why you are seeing overwatering problems. Always check the soil before adding water to the pot. Otherwise, how do you know it actually needs a drink? You can use your finger and go a few inches deep into the soil. If it feels moist, then wait another few days and then check again. It really really needs to feel dry to the touch, that's when it's ready for a drink. I like to use the world's best invention, the moisture meter, because I find it much more reliable than my finger. And you can see the one I use in my Amazon store, link below. It might be that you have your plant in too dark a spot and it's taking too long for the soil to dry out. If this is the case, then you probably want to consider moving it somewhere brighter, warmer, and even set up a grow light for it. If it has been suffering and you've just repotted it, then avoid putting it somewhere in direct sun immediately. The plant is already stressed. It's not going to like being placed somewhere bright and hot. Instead, let it settle down from the repot by placing it somewhere bright, but not in direct sun and see how it gets on for a few weeks. When you pile tons of wet clothes onto a clothes horse, it can take an age for everything to dry out. This is because there is a lack of ventilation around the clothes to dry them out properly. And this is exactly the same with our indoor plants. Our homes can become quite stagnant with very little air changes inside with the doors and windows kept closed to keep the heat or cold out. This can result in plants taking longer to dry out between watering, which won't be great for the roots. Place the plant in an area with good ventilation or even use a fan to promote air circulation and you should see a good response from it. I mentioned earlier that a lack of oxygen is the real killer to plants roots but it's actually something else that is more sinister attacking the roots of your overwater plant and in this video here I explain what it is so check it out by clicking on the link.